Hello everyone and welcome back to modeling Apollo spacecraft in Blender. We are going to discuss texturing the spacecraft and there are many ways to go about it. I'm mainly going to use Substance Painter to do it and I'm not particularly good at Substance Painter but I'm good enough. And But you may not have Substance Painter, it is a pay for software. So I'm going to first show you basically how to do it without Substance Painter, though there are many ways to do it, uh, to tackle the problem without Substance Painter as well. Uh, but uh, basically the way I did it without Substance Painter when I did so. Uh, we have sort of done a sloppy UV unwrap of the model just using Smart UV Project and we'll be able to see why that is sloppy. And one thing we need to do right now is sort of hide the colliders. I'll keep the colliders on the aero cap on, but I'll hide the colliders on the service module and the pods so that they don't get in the way of us seeing what's going on. Uh, but we'll, yeah, we'll be able to see what's going on with the aero cap. Okay, so uh, one thing that somebody was talking about in the comments that I'll broach is the number of polygons in the model or tries or verts or whatever. And uh, the thing that you need to remember is that in Unity, the limit for each mesh, each one of these, each one of the little mesh triangles in our hierarchy, it can only be 32,000 um, whatever, I think tries is the limit. So in Unity, it will automatically try and cut the mesh apart uh, in order to limit it to 32,000. But when you bring it into a game like Kerbal Space Program, uh, what's going to happen is that the cut parts, uh, even though they looked right in Unity, will just disappear in Kerbal Space Program. So uh, Unity has a way of dealing with the meshes that have more than 32,000, but you're not going to be able to make it work in Kerbal Space Program. It'll just be invisible. So yeah, if you actually have invisible faces in Kerbal Space Program and you know that the problem wasn't a normal facing the wrong way, then it's probably because you have too many tries or verts or faces on your model. Now, we have way more than 32,000 here right now, but that's divided up in many of the different meshes, so we're okay. For instance, uh, the mesh for the RCS pod is only 1,304, though that's multiplied by 4 because of the mirroring, and so forth. So the pod, the pod has a lot now because well, actually, we cut off the RCS parts, so that is 2,500. So we've got it all divided up, and so it should be safe. We are not trying to make a low-poly game here, so this is a no, this is not a high-poly model. Uh, a model of this could easily run into a million uh, faces or something like that, but we are sort of midway. We're we're okay for game purposes. All right. So now, as far as UV editing is concerned, as I mentioned, oh, this one didn't get unwrapped properly. Um, well, it seems like I've gotten reverted to a version that isn't unwrapped. So anyway, we'll start with the pod blue here. And what we're going to do, we just did smart UV project. And the problem you're gonna have is that there are gonna be seams in the sort of uh, texture. And you may want to manually unwrap it or at least tell it where the seams ought to be instead of letting uh, Blender make the seams itself. And one place for the seam, for instance, is right here, right? And so you can do edge, mark seam, and then when we select it all and let's say uh, just unwrap, now you'll see this all comes as part of a single part. And then there's cutouts for the window areas where we're gonna have the HRS tiles. Uh, it sort of overlaps some stuff, but we can select here, uh, select linked by pressing L. Oh, I don't have screencast keys on. Let's skip that. It turns it off every time I start. So, okay. So L for selecting that and then G to move it. L, G, but, or we want to unselect that. Okay. G. So we can do it like that. And then this hatch. So we can arrange them. In fact, I will. I won't take the smart UV project. I'll be good about it. And so even though it's overlapping, as long as we're over one of the vertices or faces that belong to that mesh, we can move it. Um, I have no idea what this is. Oh, those are a ring of things. I'll leave that be. Uh, maybe we can scale that up. 
Um, so we can circle select or box select that and scale it up so it takes up more of the spare room here. This seems a little bit squished for some reason, uh, but that's probably all right as long as it's continuous. Okay, and that's the window rim. We can deal with that. So the way you would do this without um, Substance Painter is import the image texture. And here I have an image texture I very, very, very quickly made in Photoshop. And I'm going to just take all of this stuff, scale it down, and move it over here into the pod blue area. See, I've made this texture. It isn't finished. Uh, for instance, I'd probably make an interior over here. And we've got a block here. There, there are other textures that I haven't done, but this is just for demonstration purposes. And so when we go into layout and take a look at the uh, rendered view, and not rendered, let's just do this. Now we have this blue texture, but what we'll notice is that it's the, the sort of mapping isn't ideal for this. You see that all these things are curved and it, it should be straight lines along this. And uh, so what has happened is I've, I've uh, sort of marked the seam and made it look like this, which is nice and clean and everything, but it's oriented in a way that I didn't actually want. So I'm going, there, there are ways of, uh, we could just redo the underlying texture. You can sort of see where the lines are on the underlying texture to match what we want. But if we did smart UV project right now and accepted this chopped up way, it'll have seams and it still looks crappy. So anyway, Substance Painter is going to be, uh, the reason why I bought Substance Painter, and I bought it through Steam, uh, it was a hundred bucks. Uh, otherwise, you'll have to get the subscription version, which is like $20 a month, which is really expensive. But anyway, I got it through Steam and it saves me the trouble a lot of time trying to figure out exactly how I want this. We could do various projections and stuff, but um, there are many options here, like cylinder projection. Whoa, no. Uh, Q projection. And now Q projection might actually work pretty well. Uh, let's just... But of course it's overlapped everything. But you see the orientation of the faces now. So if we take all of these, and we can box select this bunch. Oh, I had that other thing selected. That's fine, though. Now, when we take a look at it, the orientation is a little bit better. In fact, that's that's okay as far as the markings for that. Uh, we'd have to sort out the rest of the stuff, but anyway, that is part of the problem that we're going to have to deal with, especially with these fine markings. Uh, if we take a look at the we're going to unwrap everything all over again. Oh, the heat shield could probably go over here. Let's find odd tiles, select linked material. Okay, and we have not told it to use that particular image maps. Oops. So we're going to go image texture. Each uh, material can be assigned to it. Uh, so we'll have just, in this case, we have just one texture file for all the materials. We're just unwrapping them separately. And if we do that and move it into the tile area, what we get is these little tile things, but they're in the wrong orientation. But in this case, I think we just need to R for rotate, and then we can rotate them like this. I mean, it's not the most optimal way of going about it, but um, again, what we have is the curvature of these isn't matching up with the underlying things. So what happens if we do cube project? Well, now it makes them straight. Though it's cer certainly not using the texture space optimally right now. That's marginally better, you can see. Uh, we can just shift it down. But we're really only using one row of these tiles, so maybe we shouldn't 
be using so much space here. And we're poking out there now. The other way is to create the UV unwraps uh, so like this, uh, say smart UV project or UV unwrap. Okay, you have this, but let's say you don't have the image. You can export UV layout and then it'll let you save this layout for Photoshop. And then you can import the layout in Photoshop and then do the image editing there. So you'll have, you know, where the little parts are and you can edit the texture file in Photoshop to make it look right. And then sort of skew the tiles as necessary. So you can do it that way. Um, for Substance Painter, there are many ways of tackling the problem too. Uh, I'm just going to UV unwrap everything again using Smart UV Unwrap. Okay, right now because I removed the texture on the pod, it's unhappy so it made it black. Um, but that'll be fine. We've got the colliders poking through now. Okay, now I'm going to save it for sure. And what we want to do is we need to be able to see everything. Right now the heat shield is covered. Uh, so when we go into Substance Painter, we're not going to be able to see the heat shield at all. And we won't know if we're texturing it properly. So uh, the abort engines, we need to apply their rotation. And I'll save that too. So we're going to move the abort engines really low. We're going to make sure the colliders uh, are on the material material so that they we can remove their visibility in Substance Painter. Move the service module, move the heat shield, and then we'll move the cap and arrow cap higher. And that should make everything clear. Okay, so here I'm going to export an FBX file. I'm going to create a special FBX file called CST100-SP for Substance Painter uh, so that we know that that's not the main one that we're going to use in Unity. This is the separated one, specially separated one, so that we can see everything in Substance Painter. And I'm going to export that. Okay, so now I'm going to go into Substance Painter and do the texturing the way I do it these days. Okay, so in Substance Painter we go new and I'm going to go with uh, 2048 because I think generally speaking that's that's the resolution that we have for Kerbal Space Program. Okay, that is our Substance Painter file for the project. And it looks like this as expected. And here in the texture set list, we see all these. Uh, to some extent, this is cumbersome when we bring it into Unity to have so many of these, but it's sure easier here. Uh, there is an option to have fewer of these texture sets or fewer of the materials and sort of combine these into the same material. That's an option. You don't have to have one uh, separate material for every single sort of style that you want. You could combine the HRSI with, let's say, the RCS and the steel into one map and do it that way. Uh, but this is quicker and I'm more for doing things quicker. So it'll be a little bit more cumbersome in Unity, but not that bad. So I'm hiding the material. Remember, I made all of the colliders this material one so that I could hide them here. And I have certain materials. You can download materials for free uh, for Substance Painter. They are available. There are also pay for ones. And also when you get, if you do the subscription version, uh, $20 a month or whatever, uh, you have an option to download more and you get to keep those. Uh, so I have a few. Uh, I have uh, more than usual. Most of these were downloaded for free from the free website. And also from places like ArtStation, there are additional ones available. In fact, for the interior, I might use one of the ones that I got from ArtStation. And that's like these. So we've got this sort of uh, insulation kind of grid for the interiors that we can use. There is one that I like particularly, uh, this one. So probably for the interior, let me just focus on the interior so we can hide everything else here. Now remember the interior map is only going to show up on the inside 
And navigation in Substance Painter is weird. You hold down Alt. There are other 3D programs that work like this. So you can see uh, the interior is actually transparent from, transparent from the outside and only visible on the inside. Now you might not want the look that I'm going for. I've, I haven't seen the interior of CST100, so that is an important piece of information. So I'm applying this into here. You see, now we've got the interior with that pillow, but uh, these are a little bit big, right? The first thing we want to do is projection, triplanar projection, and that'll eliminate some of the seams uh, that we have. So the seam problems that we had before, if we undo that, um, I'm just taking a look to see if there's any obvious seams here. Well, I mean, there's one up there, obviously. Uh, there's right, right one right there. So you can see there's a seam there. And then when we go to triplanar projection, it sort of eliminates that. It makes it more natural. And now everything sort of runs together. You can see across this line, uh, these lines sort of run together. I mean, sometimes it doesn't quite work out, but for the most part it does. And we want to change the scale here to scrunch it up a little bit more. So now it looks like that. And that's a little bit better, I think. So we've rescaled it. And that's the pod interior. We don't need to deal with the seat and seat steel. I had done those before. So yeah, that is a paid for texture. So you're not going to have that normally. But they're not very expensive. And in this case, I've used this one a lot. Uh, this set a lot. There's a whole bunch of them. And they come with other tweaks too. So like um, if you actually pay for these, they do a lot of stuff like micro tile scale. I don't even know what that does, but wrinkle scale can change. I think I've scaled it down so much that it doesn't do very much. Wrinkle power. Yep. Uh, it's very subtle what's happening there. They're a little subtle. If you look right here, it's making a subtle. Oh, that, there, there's lots of wrinkles now. So they create these materials or substances with a lot of options and you can change the color as well here now i don't care about the seats we'll care about the solar panels though so let's just go from top to bottom from now uh, because i wanted to do the interior because obviously it's hidden and so the heat shield i have a i've cooked up a combination of things oops you can actually paint on these but we don't want to do that right now um, I've got a smart material that I cooked up. A smart material is if you combine a whole bunch of materials together. Uh, so there's the normal materials. And then let's say we've got these layers here. Let's say I layered a whole bunch of stuff together. And then I sort of tweaked it so that it's part this, part that, you know. Uh, we've got two concretes here. We could go 48% uh, this and 56% this and combine them. And then you could add them both into a folder. There's a new folder here, and then you can put them into the folder. And then you say create smart material here. So that's what the smart materials are. They're little folders uh, combining different textures. So I have created such a texture for heat shields, and I named it the heat shield texture. So that's this one here. It's actually based on wood textures. <laughs> I combined a bunch of wood textures. It's a little bit tough to see it. We can change the lighting um, by shift right click. I don't know if that does any better. It's a very dark texture that I've got there right now. We could lighten it up. So again, the heat shield uh, smart material is just a bunch of stuff. And then you can see mortar wall and wood walnut. And we could lighten it up here if you want a lighter heat shield, see? But it's really a walnut sort of texture. But I thought that was best. And then the top of the heat shield is the steel, but we'll just go down in order. So HRSI, uh, I did, even though I bought the Substance Painter from Steam, I decided to get the subscription specifically because I saw that they had Space Shuttle tiles. And this, this, uh, this material right here, Space Shuttle heat shield tiles, was especially attractive. So I decided to get those. And obviously we'll see the benefit of that right now as I put that here. Now we had the same same sort of problem that we had when trying to apply the tiles in Blender, right? But if we go UV projection, try planar projection, uh, that will help a little bit. Our scale is a little bit too high. Ah, see now we've got it almost lined up there. 
it's almost looking right. We can shift it using 3D projection settings. Uh, so if you want to shift it in X, but that doesn't affect much. Y is the up and down here. It seems like 0.04, no, 0.07. Okay, maybe I shouldn't type numbers in. Uh, it's a little bit fine. Okay, 0.079 seems to work for these. That's the one I most care about. The others can look a little bit haphazard. We could do each individually. For instance, instead of having one layer for all of them, we can create a new space shuttle uh, tile layer. And see, that's covering up the original one. And we can create a mask for it add mask and we'll add a black mask which means it's not going to be applied but we'll make a white part of the mask over this area here covering the hatch and so we've got the brush already here and so now this this second one is going to be applied only to this area the rest of these take this first one and so then we can adjust the tiling on this. So instead of selecting the mask, we select this. Uh, let's do try planar again and scale. Uh, it doesn't seem to be applying over here. Hold on. But now you can see the, whoops, that's too much. The tiles are oriented a bit and then we can shift them down as well here. It, it seems like I haven't got that part right. I'll take that. That's fine. And I'm going to leave the others the way they are. Okay, so we've got those. And then the pod itself, well, yeah, the next thing is pod blue. So we'll do that. Pod blue. Uh, it's sort of like this, except for this thermal padding, except it's blue. It's not so dirty. Uh, so we're going to reduce the dirt level. Let's see, technical parameters. See, there's all these parameters for this. We don't want Atlantis written on it. Uh, and it's not so dirty right now, but the cloth color we want blue, right? It's not that blue. It's very close to white. It's sort of like that. And I am going to go to triplanar projection again. And now we're getting the line sort of in the right direction, you'll note. But I want a little bit of more scaling. We don't want those warning labels. That's an option for this particular material. So we've got sewn circles. Let's just turn those off. Stitch pattern. I don't know if we want. Um, it's probably okay. Um, warning labels we want off. And we don't need the rips in it. It's a new pod, darn it. And then it's looking about what we would expect. And uh, you know that uh, because everything that, that has pod blue gets textured at the same time, uh, these all got textured. On the, no, the top cap, it's actually sort of smooth on the very top of it. So it's a little bit different, but I think I'll leave it the way it is for now. I'm not going to go into that. We've done the pod interior. The radiator is another texture. And we are going to go, I think I've got a smart material for radiators. Yeah, I've got this radiator one that I use. So the radiator is down here with, and I'm holding down Alt and moving with the mouse wheel. Sorry, there's no screen cap keys for Substance Painter. But again, this is a texture that I made for radiators. And that's not quite the orientation that we want. Oops. We want to turn it. Okay, something around here I need to turn. Ah, it's this one. Um, but it's only half going the right way. Okay, uh, it looks like uh, the Z is what I want to turn to make it this way around. Okay. So we've got oriented, right? But they're too far apart. So I want the scale to be higher. And uh, that's a decent sort of radiator thing going on there, I think. Uh, it's a little bit whiter on the real service module. 
And so we'll go into the color here, base color, make it a little bit lighter, and maybe reduce the metal on it. Okay. The, the way the radiator actually work, uh, looks, it's, it's actually got little dots on it. It's not even like this at all. <laughs> um, this, is what the, this is what the radiator actually looks like. I, I don't know about the dots. I'll contemplate that later. So this is the first time we're seeing it like this. We've got the NASA tag. We've got these blue stripes to add to. If we really want to make it, you can see how the top cone is, the patches are like that, and it's more like a conic thing. Here there are some tiles on the hatch. We're not doing that. We've got the whole hatch with the pod blue for now. So there are finicky things that we can detail later. For now, I'm going to use this white stage thing that I've already made. And that is a combination of textures, and we just apply that. It's very simple. I'm not going to fill around with it. But some of the ones that come with Substance Painter are really handy. For instance, like Steel Rough, I think comes with it. And there are a lot of them that are free are metallic textures that you can use. And in fact, we'll use Steel Rough right now for the engines. And the, uh, so the engines, the top of the heat shield, and also this portion of the pod. I'm just gonna make steel for now. Now it's looking a little bit maybe too rough and probably it'd be aluminum, but uh, I feel like aluminum is a little bit too boring a look. Triplanar projection, we can sort of change the scale of it. We can reduce the roughness. Roughness is an option here. Makes it look a little smooth. Also, if you feel like it's too bumpy, the height map and the normal map. Mainly in Kerbal Space Program, we only have the base color and normal, or albedo and normal, as sometimes called. So that is a thing to keep in mind. We're not going to have a metallic map per se. Okay, well, things are looking up for us. Uh, we still need something for the RCS textures and windows. The hatch is a little bit curved the wrong way, I feel like. But, okay, um, we're just going to have a dark... I have... Uh, this is just a regular material. I think it was a free... Uh, it was a free one. Uh, this gunmetal one was nice. It's a little bit beaten up. You can see it's got sort of stuff going on, but we can reduce the amount of that. Uh, so, first of all, scaling. You can see a little bit of beaten up stuff going on there. Uh, but the scratch amount can be reduced. But rather than reduce it, I want some wear and tear. But I just want to adjust the normal map so it's not so prominent. You can see now it's just a little bit worn there. Okay, and we actually used the tile texture here uh, for these, but I didn't really want to. Right, I don't want uh, HRSI tiles here. That was just a bit of laziness on my part. But we can, let's just copy this layer on the HRSI one. I'm going to paste the layer and we're going to create another mask. And it'll be a black mask. And we're just going to make sure that the interior ones in here are white. And we are going to do that using polygon fill to make sure that's just those polygons. C does something completely different in here. Okay, we have to be sure not to get polygons that I don't want. I wonder why this one is a little bit weird, though. Okay, so that's the sort of beaten up gunmetal texture, but we've sort of got it leaking on the outside for some reason. This is just quick and dirty. You see the letters being cut off here? And we could refine that quite a lot. We don't need the letters being cut off. We could just, again, duplicate the shuttle tile thing and sort of shift it around specifically for this bit to find a nice fit. 
Um, yeah, but I've sort of optimized the one that's being applied here is the same one that's being applied down here, and we optimize it for uh, that row down there. Uh, some places it's stretched a little bit. Depends how picky you want to be, really. Uh, for the windows, normally I just apply the. There is a plastic texture, this plastic PVC. I just toss on. You don't actually have to select the material over here, by the way. As long as you uh, just pull it and drag it onto the part that has that texture, it's fine. Um, somehow my my steel texture looks wrong now. <laughs> Uh, what happened with the steel texture? Oh, okay, so C changes from from these options, and there's a lot of them. We just wanted to get back to lighting material. Okay, so our pod looks like this right now, and that's why I think we had the leakage over here. No, we actually do have the leakage over here. I don't know why that happens. Okay. But, you know, this is an okay version right now. We could probably refine the color of it, the color of the main pot. This is a different sort of blue than we have here, isn't it? This is more of a blue-green going on here. There's a lot more variation in our thermal padding coloration here than they actually have. Ultimately, it'll be a matter of how it looks in Kerbal Space Program, so we don't really know how this all is going to be. Uh, likely, if I was... I mean, I would probably spend more time on this, but for now, for demonstration purposes, I think we're okay. There's a lot of free solar panel textures. I think this is a free solar panel texture that I got. And that's very simple. Okay, so at this point, I at least want to add the NASA logo to this. I'm not going to do the blue stripes on top. We could create a decal for that as well. Uh, but let's just... And we could do quite a lot of other things. Actually, the little black areas around the RCS boards don't seem to be tiles, do they? They just seem to be black and with dots. We might want to replace those and just make them more like that. But first, uh, the NASA logo seems to be around here-ish. And what we do to add a decal is we add a paint layer. And we have to create the decals in something something like Photoshop or GIMP or something like that. And we have a PNG file with the actual logo. It needs to be square. Okay, and so I make it about 800 by 800. And then that's a PNG file with transparency. And then we have an alpha file that the white area is the part that we want it to pay attention to, and the black area is the transparent part. Uh, so yeah, that is how we, we have those two uh, files. We just drag and drop into Substance Painter. And then you'll see that in after we've added a paint layer here, the alpha, I'll just clear that, the alpha here is just uniform cl color, and we take and drag and drop this alpha into there. And then in material mode, we take the NASA square, or actually in base color, I take it back. Base color, we put it there. And now we will have a little thing to create the NASA logo. But that's a little bit too big. We just we can just paint it a whole bunch of NASA logos. You can see it sort of blends into the material too. And we just need a little bit small. There's actually a handlebar there. Uh, but it's a small little thing right around here-ish. We can make it a little bit smaller. So we go to the brush size and reduce that. Something about that size. That looks good. That looks good. And so that's how we do decals. And it's as simple as that. Now I wanted to touch up the HRSI. Uh, since over here it seems like they're just sort of flat back black with a little some dots or something. So I'm just going to add another layer. And we're going to add a... Uh, we could do a paint layer. Mm, let's just do a paint layer, maybe. And basically the alpha ends up being like your brush. The brush shape. But we won't care about that. We are going to make the base color something that I want to paint. Still painted. Let me see. And so you can see that we are, in fact, 
using many different materials on the same texture set. We're just combining them as different layers. And so you don't have to make every single different thing you want to do into a different material. I've just done it that way, sort of for my convenience. But you can certainly just sort of have everything together. I'm sort of overwriting the gunmetal there a little bit. Okay, for the sake of this video, I'm not going to keep touching up right now. We've got the textures basically okay. We could do better, but we've got the NASA logo on, and that's important. We could add the HRS tiles to the hatch and everything too, but I'm satisfied that we can move on at this point. So what we want to do is export the textures, especially to the folder that our model is in. By default, it'll uh, go to some other folder. So, okay, I'm going to select my CST100 folder. And I do not want the material one. Remember, that's the one that the colliders are assigned to. And the seat and seat steel have already been dealt with. And everything else, we want to make sure that we really can only use the base color and normal map in Blender. Oh, sorry, in Kerbal Space Program. And that's uh, the Kerbal Space Program part tools thing. We'll add the metallic sense using Textures Unlimited. The Textures Unlimited configuration can give us that sort of metallic feel to things. So we won't rely on the texture set for that. So for each of these, we're just exporting two. Now, if you were in a different game, uh, making a model for a different game, you might not want so many of these uh, texture sets because you're going to end up like maybe six of these. And then you're going to have a lot of different files to take care of. The heat shield, I don't want it at uh, 2K. I think we can be okay with it being 1K. The HRSI, it's, there are just little bits all over the place. So 1K. The pod blue is the main thing. And we have the NASA logo we wanted in good definition. The pod interior also we probably want in decent definition. So we'll leave it there. The radiator is only a ring around the... Service module, we could probably go 1K, and then RCS 512, they're tiny. Solar panel, maybe 1K. So we can optimize like this so that we don't have really large texture files. Then the white is the main service module. Uh, we'll leave it be. The windows really don't need to be very big. 512 will be fine. And then so we've got all these and we can just hit export and it'll go to the folder that we've set here. Note that I'm using PBR metallic roughness. There are many options. In fact, uh, Unity render pipeline and all that. But again, yeah, I'm just going to leave it be and deal with the metallic sense in the with textures unlimited. So uh, we are going to export and we have written all our texture files. So with any luck, it'll look something like the pod that we have here. <laughs> Uh, again, the radiator they have on the actual CST100 seems to look rather different, so I don't know. Uh, we'll uh, I'll probably redo that some other time. But we've got a heat shield, we've got the solar panels and everything, so I'm reasonably happy. I'm going to save this so that I can edit it later, otherwise we'll lose all our work. And next, it'll be time to import stuff into Unity, so we are going to discuss that. By the way, um, I do get this message down here, generally speaking, so uh, I'm not worried about that. I get the results that I want, even if it says that. So anyway, I probably am doing things wrong here because Substance Painter I'm still relatively new to. But yeah, we are going to move on to Unity and see how to do that part in the next video. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.